Hello everyone. Welcome to today's current affairs session of Civil Speedia. The topics we are going to see today is Rajasthan Ziga Strain and National Clean Air Program, institutions of eminence, and with respect to editorial topic is universal basic income. Rajasthan Ziga Virus Strain. The recent study that has been conducted by National Institute of Virology in Pune has found that this Rajasthan Ziga Strain. is a completely endemic to asia it is not linked to brazilian strain and it is not linked to microcephaly which is the neurological disorder that affects the fetus and apart from that this in india with respect to this ziga virus the first case was uh, observed in ahmedabad in 2016 and that was close to malaysian strain while with respect to the recent outbreak of uh, ziga virus in the rajasthan that is completely endemic to this asia and apart from that what is the positive news with respect to this outbreak of zika virus recent study conducted by pune is this shows that there is already some section of indian population have developed a immune to this zika virus that is the good news that has been conducted that has been come out from the study conducted by this national institute of virology and apart from that what are the challenges that is future ahead in front of india with respect to this containing the zika virus and many other epidemic diseases the first challenges between before india is this limited knowledge of india with respect to this epidemiological characteristics of zika virus strain and second important thing is this poor health surveillance system that makes this more people started to get affected by this zika virus and it is more contagious also and since rajasthan is a border state it makes to have more tourist people attracted towards rajasthan that makes this rajasthan spreading the virus to madhya pradesh and gujarat and many other states near to rajasthan and apart from that the third challenge before this india is this under financing that is under funding and inadequate health infrastructure that is make to inadequate outbreak response to control this zika virus constraint and apart from that there was a lack of research properly conducting with respect to this vaccine developed against this zika virus strain and this huge health infrastructure between the rural and urban india makes this rural people more prone to zika virus strain and apart from that this poor vector control mechanism that is prevailing especially in the rural india makes the rural people more vulnerable to this zika virus strain and the next topic is national clean air program this recent study that has been conducted by ngo greenpeace india the report named apocalypse 3 that shows that it has analyzed 313 cities in india with respect to the how the air pollution in the 313 cities has been prevailed and among this 313 cities 214 cities this study report has said that 241 cities has come has a more amount of concentration of particulate matter that has been subscribed that has been recommended by this national Am ambient air quality standards that is the standards that has been prescribed by this national ambient air quality standards this air pollution has been much more the concentration of a particulate matter in the 241 cities is much more and apart from this among this 241 cities one or two cities only has been covered under this national clean air program this one or two cities has been spread across this 23 states and union territories and this cities has been identified by central pollution control board based on the data that is provided on the air pollution between 2011 to 2015 so only this one or two cities has been come under this national clean air program while the rest of this 139 cities will not be come under this national clean air program that is the important news that with respect to this national clean air program apart from that the recent the famous journal of lancet has said that in india is the highest number of death that is related to to air pollution is happening among the world so it is one of the serious thing that we are lifting the 139 cities which are having a more concentration of a particular matter and apart from that this lancet journal has said that 14 out of the 15 worst uh, air pollution cities has been prevailed in india and apart from that this national clean air program is nothing but it is a five year action plan that has been started that has put strategy how to reduce the concentration of a particulate matter of 2.5 and 10 particulate matter micron to reduce it by 20 to 30 percentage within 2024 by taking the 2017 as the base year and the city specific action plan that has been prescribed under this city under this national clean air program is first and foremost thing is it has to plan to develop a three tier system the first tier system is to have a real time data collection of the dynamic data from this uh, all over the cities of this 139 cities also and apart from that the second 
thing is to have a data archiving. So collecting the data and archiving it and finally making processing so that it can give a decision support system of action triggering of which series has to be curtained first and which series has to be curtained second. The priority of the action triggering mechanism will also be conducted under the city specific action plan. Apart from that, the second thing is it, this is the action plan has planned to have an extensive plantation plan so that it will reduce the air pollution, especially this particular matter. And apart from that, this we need to have a modify this landscaping, this arterial road system because this major arterial system is the one of the thing that where the more and more traffic and pollution is happening. So we have to reduce this particulate matter concentration by having proper managing this landscapes of this arterial roads. We have to use more and more technology in this like JS that is geographical information system as well as the remote sensing data and location based analysis we have to do. Then only we can reduce this uh, traffic flow as well as this air pollution can be reduced uh, much lot. Apart from that we need to have a stringent industrial standards especially this brick industries we need to have a much more stringent action plan. Then only we can reduce this particulate matter and other air pollutants. Apart from that we need to have a pothole free roads because if when there is more and more potholes it will start to have reduce the uh, reduce the more number of uh, vehicles and it will lead to have high amount of a uh, traffic. And apart from this what is the criticism with respect to this national clean action uh, national clean air program is this program has not has been legally binding to any states. So each and every states will have their own plans. So they are not bi illegally binding to this clean air program. So we need to make to have a proper clean, uh, legally binding then only it will have a serious impact on each and every state will take a serious impact steps because this India is one of the highest number of death rates due to air pollution. So we have to curtain this at a much more faster level. And the next topic is institution of this institution of eminence is nothing but India has recently have made this institution of eminence because to have increased the quality of a higher education institution in India and apart from that to increase a more and more competition between this higher education institutions so that we Indian institutions higher education institution can go into this global ranking of a top 100 that is the major objective of this having this more and more institutions of eminence. and recently the quality standards world ranking of India in 2018 is only three universities have come under this top 250 universities that is the very worst conditions and among the big countries we are not performing that much level. So we have to make our higher education institution at a much more quality level because we India as a demographic dividend country more and more youth started to going to enter the universities and colleges. So if we are higher education system is not at the, up to the level of a global standards then we Indians will fail to have a proper employment opportunities so that this demographic dividend will become a demographic disaster. So we need to have a proper system of this institution of eminence so that we will have a proper higher education quality of a higher education institutions will be go up. And apart from this what are the things we have to notice under this institution of eminence is with this under this if a institution if a university has been given status of institution of eminence then there will be a relaxation in the regulations so that they will have more and more of a people they can entry they can free entry of a foreign people and they can have higher of foreign faculties and foreign collaboration they can make and the new curriculum rest of the things they can make on their own. So if an institute has been come under this institute of eminence then it will have more and more liberal regulations and apart from this government Indian government has planned to have 20 institutes under this institute of eminence. So 10 institutes from the public and 10 institutes from the private organization. So for that a Gopala Swami committee has been uh, put out to understand what are the institutes that can be put under this institute of eminence. So this committee will give uh, some set of uh, recommendations they have given earlier they have given 11 set of recommendations among them six institutes has been put under this institute of eminence and uh, recently they have uh, still more they have added upon 19 institutes so that totally 30 institutes they have been recommended this Kopala committee Kopal Swami committee has recommended to put under this institute of eminence among them UGC has said that this as per the guidelines of a government only 20 institutes can give a uh, status of this institute of eminence so we cannot go for this 30 so they have a uh, deferred this 30 institute that has been uh, recommended by this Kopal Swami committee so once this uh, UGC has approved then it will go to the MHRD then MHRD will give the status of institute of eminence to the institutes and apart from this what are the three categories that has been put under this institute of eminence is this public institutions that is public universities and already existing private institutions it will come and third important topic is this greenfield institutions. 
we feel the institution is nothing but they have not at built but they have given a three years of period within that they have to have established a global standard level of institute so this greenfield has been given the institute of eminence under the letter of intent to have more and more develop more global level standard institutes this recently the sixth institute that has been declared under this institute of eminence this under this public institution will be iit delhi mumbai and iisc bangalore and among the already existing private institution it's with pilani and manipal university and with respect to this greenfield institute is this geo reliance institute that was the more controversial thing that comes under this greenfield institute because we india have more and more universities around the 900 universities we have we have already in so much of institutes but they are not up to the par level of this international level since we, are, we already have more and more infrastructures but that is not at the quality level instead of writing having more institute coming under this greenfield we have to have more and more brownfield that is already existing infrastructure we have to upgrade it to a global international level and apart from this this institution what are the benefits if a institute has been if a institute has been given a status of institute of eminence especially this public institutions will get a financial assistance from the government of 1000 crore for 5 years so that they can give up, upgrade their infrastructures and make them equal par with this international standards of higher education institute and the eligibility criteria to get into this institute of eminence is first and thing is if they are coming under the any international ranking of top 500 institutes or with respect to this national ranking infrastructure framework if they are coming under the top 50 then that institute can get this uh, status of institute of eminence apart from this what are the criticism with respect to this institute of eminence is first and foremost thing is this political influence because what are the institute that has been put under this institute of eminence have the political ideology that is going uh, with along with this uh, ruling party so more and more the institutes which are favoring this ruling party ideology that institutes are get more favored towards this institute of eminence and apart from that this leads to this more political influence if there is coming then it will leads to less amount of transparency and apart from that there are always inadequate funding because this 1000 crore of funding will not just make a constitute into a global standard level so we need to have adequate amount of funding so that more and more institutes will get more and more universities of indian higher education systems will get into this up par level of inter international level and apart from this this low quality is one of the thing that is burdening india's universities level so we have to make more and more upgraded brownfield institutes and what are the way forward things that we can make so that our higher in education institutes will go up to the par level of international level the first thing is we need to have promote more and more research and development only when there is more and more enthusiasm towards the research and development then only this higher education institute will get a quality amount of a staffs to teach to the higher education students then only the amount of quality will be come out so we have to promote first the culture of a research and development and second important thing is this in, within a decade that is within the next 10 years 14 crore of youth will going to enter into this universities so by having a poor qualities of universities we cannot make a jobs market that this you know this graduated people will get in the future and there was a much more amount of automation will going to happen that makes this poor quality of uh, college educated people will not get much amount of a bright future so we have to make a right moment to make this quality of education has been provided at the higher education level and apart from that this education is not just a stand alone thing that is if we giving a good quality of higher education then the output of a whole country education system will be transformed it will not happen like that so education is a continuous thing that is from starting from the primary level we need to have a standard things we have to have give a quality things then only the overall outcome of a higher education institute will be go up by having a poor quality of a primary education we cannot have a high we cannot get output of a high quality of higher education so we have to promote this quality of education starting from this primary level secondary level and the school level and the college level and next topic is universal basic income this universal basic income this topic is not a new topic it is already a old idea that takes a means of how to redistribute this income inequality and this definition with respect to this ubi is it's nothing but it is a periodic cash payment that has been unconditionally given to all the individuals irrespective of whether they are in the working condition or not so by giving a cash payment this periodical cash payment to unconditional to all is the basic definition of this universal basic income and with respect to the network that is with respect to this ubi is bien that is basic income yes network it is a network of academics and, and activists who are much interested with the idea of basic income 
and this BIA and Congress summit will be held in this 2019 in the Hyderabad in August 22 to August 25 of this 2019. And why do we need to have this universal basic income? Because in the last economic survey itself, we have dedicated some one chapter about this UBI. Whether India, it is right time to implement a UBA or it is a it is a right time to discuss about the whether it will be suit for Indian people. So why we have to analyze why it is need for this UBI or what are the argument that is going against this UBI and what we can do away from it. So first thing is why we need to have UBI, this universal basic income. First thing is this increasing amount of automation will leads to going to more amount of jobs at the very risk condition. So at any time any people may lose their job. So by having a basic income will make them at least a sustainable level. So for, uh, that is the first and foremost thing. Second thing is too much of too many government schemes that is centrally sponsored scheme around 950 centrally sponsored centrally sponsored and as well as centrally sector schemes are available. Apart from that there are much more of a state government schemes but in spite of all these schemes a citizen cannot have a regular amount of income so that they will have fear he will not he or she will not fear about what will happen if I lose a job. So in spite of having all the things if we have a universal basic income then it will give a confidence to them that I can sustain it at a basic level. So I can go for a much more creative jobs rather than fearing for and going for the unproductive jobs. And third important thing is the growing inequality. So this growing inequality makes the people at a lower level to be suffer a lot because who are technically well sound or who are highly skilled they are only getting a jobs and they are getting a more amount of a salary. While low number of people this unskilled people cannot get that much level of income that makes the wage inequality and the inequality started to grow up and up. So we have to reduce it for that at least this low level of people need to have a basic income then only they will get a lesser time to think about what they can do to improve their skill or reskill or upskill themselves so that they can get a good amount of a job and good amount of a salary. And apart from that it will give an economic liberty to a person because if he started to have at least for the food level the you know, basic level of individual getting a good amount of a, um, income as a minimum basic level then it will give a economic liberty that will give have a more productivity towards the job. And apart from this uh, recently we have did a pilot project in uh, Madhya Pradesh with respect to this SEVA and UNICEF has conducted this self UBI scheme as this unconditional cash transfers. So in 2011 to 2012 that shows that more number of people started to have especially this poor vulnerable people started to have more engaged in more productive work because more people said that it will give laziness to the people but it was not happening in reality. In reality it is, uh, the report has said that more amount of uh, poor people started to go for the productive work rather than going for, for the minimum amount of work and productive work. And apart from this the recent Raitu Bantu scheme that has been launched in Telangana to give a direct support for that direct income support to the farmers or one, one of the welcoming one. So these are the things that how UBI has been already piloted project in, in India how it is impacting the Indian people and what are the arguments that is going against this UBI. First and foremost thing is this by giving a basic income it will make more people going to be a lazy that is no need to go for a job already you have a minimum amount of income. So this is one of the thing argument that is against this giving this granting the UBI and second thing is people will not all the people will not get properly spend the money on the health or education rather they will go for this temptation goods like alcohol and tobacco items. So it will going to have a negative impact on the environment as well as the health standards of India. And apart from this that it is going to have a huge fiscal burden on the government. So it's going to have a more and more crunch on this fiscal deficit. Already we have set a target of 3.3 percentage of the GDP. The fiscal deficit has to be within this limit. While if we started to implement this UBI without resuming or revamping this other subsidies then it will go have a much more of a 3.5 percentage of a GDP of this fiscal deficit. So it will much go beyond this target level. So it will give a much burden, fiscal burden on this government if we not properly revamp this all other subsidy schemes. And apart from this the fourth important argument against this is it will start to give a more inflation. So if started to give more inflation then it will reduce the purchasing power parity of the people and overall it will affect the people's economy. And apart from this it will start to leak because if uh, people started to have a minimum income level then it will start to have some sectors to have a more increase the wages level. For example if we take in the agriculture sector when MG Narega started to came more people started to go for MG Narega work instead of going for this low level of agriculture labor work. So sharecroppers, 
or more number of agriculture labor work there was a scarcity so if started to give more increasing amount of a wage then only people will come to this uh, this kind of uh, agriculture laboring so this will make agriculture still more burden already this agriculture is uh, burdening and this kind of increase in the wage in this agriculture to the agriculture laborers will make this agriculture to me not feasible one and apart from that the sixth important thing is already we have a more and more digital theft is happening in india and this kind of uh, people giving all the ubi through this bank uh, that is da direct benefit transfer it will make more and more theft in the digital manner and more people even the educated people cannot protect themselves from this dig digital theft then more number of uh, financially illiterate people and uneducated people of india cannot have protect themselves from this digital theft so we need to have proper protection system safeguard system and it has to be easily accessible to even the uneducated people then only this ubi will have a proper benefit to, will reach the poor and vulnerable section of the society and apart from that what are the way forward things that we can do just directly before implementing this ubi we can grow for the gradualism that is this quasi universal universality that is not giving to entire population just by giving at a face by face to each and every population like giving a population first giving the basic income universal basic income to all the disabled people and then to widows then elderly people like that we can have a face by face we can include all the each and every people while instead of that we can go for this nsp also already we have national social assistance program but see, we have not increased that amount for pension that is giving to this disabled women and widow and elders people from the uh, 2006 to 7 that shows we are already not concerning about this national social assistance programs that is also it's similar to this ubi only so we have to properly implement this nsap then it will have much more positive impact on the society apart from this the second topic is second thing is we should not stop this public expenditure on health infrastructure and rural infrastructure because just giving the ubi will not give enhance the health or rural infrastructure <laughs> government has to provide a proper infrastructure the government has to provide a continuous amount of public expenditure on this health education and rural infrastructure apart from that the third way, way forward things that we have to do is we have to revamp and rationalize the already existing subsidies because if we not properly revamp and rationalize the subsidies this directly implementing will uba will have to be a clashes and will have more and more fiscal burden on the government so by properly revamping or rationalizing the subsidies already prevailing that will make the fiscal burden of the ubi will be reduced to much level and apart from this by have, by giving a proper of 17500 rupees per year for every individual each and every individual will lift the people above the poverty line as recommended by tendulkar committee so if we started to give more of a ubi then more amount of people will come out of this poverty line as a poverty line we have decided by this tendulkar committee and apart from that recently sikkim government has said that they are going to implement this ubi from 2022 with that we will end today's current session thank you have a nice day share and like comment on this channel